Hey guys, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we have a review of this guy. This is the Gerber Asada. A pretty cool little cleaver frame lock knife from Gerber. And uh, we've got a lot to get to, so let's jump right in with the size comparisons. Start off with our Rat 1. And our Rat 2. So, as you can see, it's actually just about rat two size. It looks a lot larger than it actually is. Um, and actually, it performs a lot bigger than you would think it is, too. Okay, next up, our usuals. Here's the Spyderco PM2. And the Benchmade bug out. So again, this is what I would call a medium-sized knife. A, uh, It's on the lower end of medium size for me. Uh, let's bring out some Civivis. Here it is against our Elementum. Here he is against our Praxis. And yeah, the Praxis is uh, looking pretty big next to that guy. Um, Let's bring in some Gerbers. Here he is against the paraframe and the mini paraframe. So, actually, just about paraframe size. Um, and now let's bring him against my favorite knife. We're going to do a lot of uh, <laughs> size comparisons. I always, I like to do a lot of size comparisons. Uh, there, so there's probably a knife that I'm going to compare him to that you've probably held. So, you know, I'll give him a give you a good idea of how big he is. And there he is against the Feldspar from CJRB. And you know what? Just a second, let me grab something. I just happen to have this sitting in my backpack. Here he is against a very similar knife, the Gerber Flatiron. And let's compare it against another budgety cleaver knife. The CJRB Crag. All right, there we go. So there's your size comparisons done. As for actual size, this guy is about seven and a half inches overall. You have a blade length of just about three inches exactly. Um, the weight is about 4.8, 4.9 ounces because, yep, steel frame lock. So this guy running on bearings. The blade steel on this particular version is 7CR17 MOV. Wah, wah, wah. However, you can get versions in D2 that come with a uh, green micarta. I really, really want one of those. <laughs> but this is the one I have. Uh, this is an aluminum scale. As you can see, it's on top of a steel liner. And uh, this is what they call their oxide aluminum. It's kind of this grayish green matte finish um, I, I like it it's pretty cool uh, and then they also come in the 7cr uh, version also comes with a uh, a red um, aluminum scale so let's go ahead and go cut some cardboard um, talk about this blade a little bit because this is a pretty unique type of blade for a cleaver and um, you know what? Actually, we'll talk about that here while we've got a good look at it. I would almost call this a clip point cleaver. You can see it has like this aggressive swoosh, which means that for a cleaver, this has quite a bit of tip or has quite a tip as opposed to something like this guy here where you don't really get much tip because the blade comes pretty much straight down to there. So, and then even on like... Uh, the CGRB Crag is pretty comparable. You know, it's got a little bit of a point two, but this one is just way, way more aggressive. So let's go cut some cardboard and let's talk about this guy. All right, Gerber Asada box cutting. I don't have any complete boxes laying around, so we're just gonna work with some scraps. So I've said before, I love the cleaver blade shape for utility cuts 
and for breaking down cardboard. I think it works very, very well at these type of tasks. You have a very wide blade, and if the grind is good, that gives, you know, the, the grind enough time to get pretty thin behind the edge. And this knife here is decently thin behind the edge. I would say that it actually has a very good grind. Yeah, it makes short work of boxes. Um, I did sharpen this guy before this video today because um, I've been using this guy for a while and uh, yeah, 7CR <coughs> does not hold up good. But the, the good thing about 7CR, it might not hold an edge, but it does sharpen very easily. And you know, this blade, as you can see here, absolutely just rips through cardboard. Makes very, very short work of all your cardboard cutting. You have a finger choil up here, very big, very comfortable. In fact, the whole knife overall is very comfortable when you're holding it. We'll get into what makes it not so comfortable here in a little bit, but this is this knife really It's a joy to use. As far as utility knives go, as far as just using your knife, getting it out of your pocket, cutting something, this knife is very, very good. Very good. All right, let's cut one more slice. And let's go look at this guy in a little bit closer detail. All right, Gerber Asada. Here's what it look, looks like in the pocket. So pretty standard knife carry. You can see it has this big fat clip. Um, that clip is very similar to the one on the flat iron, which I didn't complain about too much. This guy though is, a little bit different. I mean, it's not a bad clip. I don't hate it. I just, sometimes you can see there, oh, and there it goes in perfectly, but you know, sometimes it just, yeah, like that, binds up on your pocket before you slip it in. Yeah, it's, I mean, sometimes it works good, and when it's in your pocket, it, there's not really a problem. It comes out good. But I don't know, I'm just not a fan of the clip. The blade itself, as I've said, I really, really like the blade. The action is... Um, well, I mean, it's pretty easy to fail it. Uh, out of the, not box, but blister packaging that this knife came in when I got it. Um, not good at all. Terrible action. Um, also had, see, it's got kind of that double clutch type thing. It is running on bearings. Um, the action though is not so good. Centering, mine is centered now. It was not to begin with. Um, not by a long shot. Like when I got this out of the box, there was a lot of work I had to do on it. Which I'll go into more detail on later. Um, yeah. I can already feel that 7CR17 blade steel starting to, uh, starting to dull. I mean, actually. Huh. I think there's even. I think it's even developing a little tiny roll. I'll have to look at it closer. I'll sharpen it up again anyways, either way, but um Yeah, I can definitely feel that starting to dull, but that's okay. I mean it's a uh <laughs> that's what you get with this kind of steel. Um I might get the D2 version one day. It's not high on the list of knives I need to 
get a hold of right now. But uh, maybe one day, and I'll do a separate review on that because I do love this blade. I do love this blade, and the handle is very nice. Um, I like the looks of the knife in general, but yeah, there are some things that I'm not too fond of. So let's go ahead and go back to the table, and we will talk about what I do and don't like about the Gerber Asada. Okay, the Gerber Asada. What do I like and what do I don't like? Well, to begin with, what I like is the overall look of the knife. Knife? Knife? What is a knife? The overall look of the knife. This is a knife. What I talk about in these videos are knives. There's no such thing as a knife. If any of you have ever seen, held, or heard of a knife before, let me know. I will get one on the channel and review it. But, <laughs> that's beside the point. For now, this is a knife, and I like the looks of it. I think this is a good looking knife. Um, they do, they, they did the, uh, I've really been liking what Gerber's been doing with their uh, frame lock sides. As you can see here, this guy is kind of, you know, pretty similar to the Gerber, this is the, the Micarta and D2 flat iron, which I really, really like. And I don't know, I think it's a good look with the, you know, the satin clip and the satin pinch plate is what these are called. And, you know, it kind of matches the blade and you have this darkened steel here. I think that looks good. Um, I think the, the aluminum scale looks great. I think this blade looks awesome. One thing that I was using this knife for a lot was um, opening clamshell packaging. Because that, that tip is very fine. You, you can get it in there and drag. And I think, I, I don't know. For me, it, it, wor it worked really, really good. Even more than, you know, something that has like a, you know, more stabby point. Um, just because you have a little bit of an upsweep going to there. So, you know, you poke the tip in and then you can kind of, I don't know. I feel like you can control it more too with how much blade you have coming up here. Whatever it was, I liked using this knife to open clamshell packaging. I thought it was really, really great. Ergonomically, I have no complaints here. I think this is a very comfortable knife, despite being so thin. And there's a couple spots that, you know, might cause a couple hot spots. One off the cliff, clip, one off the lock bar. We'll talk more about that lock bar later. But overall, very comfortable. The choil, very nice. Um, I think Gerber's been doing a good job with their ergonomics. And honestly, Gerber's been doing a good job with cleavers. Um, what else do I like about this knife? Uh, I think it folds up pretty compact. You know, we look at it there, and let's bring out like the um, the CJRB Crag. These are these knives are basically you know pretty similar in terms of edge length, kind of. But this guy's just you know you've got the power of a cleaver and a pretty compact package, which I I like. It's pretty cool. The weight on this guy, yeah, it's a little bit heavy. Steel frame lock. I mean, eh. That's kind of what to be what's to be expected. Uh, the flipper tab itself is very nice. It's got good functional jimping on it. You can get a good grip grip on there, and yeah. So overall, that's what I like about the knife. I think it's very comfortable in the hand. It, it it's a great user knife. Great knife. Good good blade. Um, good size. Looks amazing. And uh, yeah, that's what I like here. What do I not like? Well, unfortunately, there's quite a bit. Uh, so number one, I thought this guy was overpriced. You can get the 7CR versions online for about 38 bucks, but I still think that's overpriced, especially considering you get stuff like the Feldspar for a 35 to 37. Um, I think this guy's pretty overpriced with materials offered. Uh, I got this guy at a brick and mortar store. I paid $42 for him, which this is not a $42 knife at all because of some of my other complaints. When I got this guy out of his clamshell packaging, he was terrible, terrible. The action was not good. The action still isn't the best, but I've tuned the knife so that it's serviceable. I mean, I can still fail. There, I didn't fail it because it was pointed down. But you can still fail it pretty easily. Um, another thing was it wasn't centered. I have since, I have since fixed that. 
Um, and it had horrible, horrible lock stick. Some of the worst lock stick ever, which was a problem because look at this lock bar. See how, I mean, here's a nice little detail. See this little kind of scallop they did here on the scale? You get your thumb in there pretty nicely, but it's not nice enough because this lock bar is so thin and there isn't as much room as they think they're giving you. And so when locks, I mean, you can hear there's still a little bit of lock stick. It was just very painful to disengage this knife. Very painful. I hurt my thumb. You know, just trying to just trying to mess around with this guy. Put my thumb out of commission for a little while. But yeah. Another thing. When I tried to uh, maintain this knife, and when I tried to make him better, taking it apart was an absolute nightmare. It was literally a nightmare. And I did not get him all the way taken apart because I ended up stripping out one of the T6 screws at the back. Lock tight and the whole nine yards and blech. No, 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 no. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, the clip is kind of in a meh uh, range. I don't really love it. don't really hate it. Um, but yeah, most of my problems with this guy were with the QC. Which, final conclusions. In a lot of ways, this was a knife that I was very excited about. And I, <laughs> I should have waited and gotten a D2 my Carter version. I should have ordered a D2 my Carter version online instead of getting this guy. And I'm, I don't know if the D2 and my Carter ones are better QC. If they're not, though, it's, you know, kind of a waste. As far as pure usability goes, this is a very utilitarian-focused knife. Um, once you have it in your hand and you're using it, it's really great. But, you know, out of the box, getting it into a position, getting it to a place where you want to use it, I finally got this guy where he locks up, he's centered, and the action is decent. But getting him there, mm -mm. it was not fun for me. Out of the packaging, this guy was terrible. He's overpriced. And honestly, there's just better stuff out there. I, if you w really, really want one of these, I have to recommend you get a CGRB Crag instead. Um, but again, if you like this blade shape, get it. Because this is one of the only blade shapes like this that I know of. So that'll be it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.